What is up guys, back in today with another reaction to the Berserk manga, this time with volume 29, the final couple chapters, the ball and the colonnade chamber. No idea what a colonnade is, I don't think, <laughs> I think I recognise that word, but um, yeah, no real idea. Uh, last couple chapters we found out what was happening with Barney's and luckily it was not exactly what I uh, <laughs> what I was expecting. She's uh, Her brother's actually marrying her off to one of his friends. Who seems okay actually, but yeah, definitely a bit more interested in the position rather than the actual kind of person that he's marrying. And uh, you saw a lot of that in these times. You still see that today, to be honest, with um, ranged marriages and stuff. That's obviously still a thing that happens, but the reason being, you still see quite a bit of today. I didn't actually catch this. These guys swinging on the, uh, the chandelier. Um, yeah, love the setting, of course. But yeah, as I said, this guy's not too bad, actually. This guy's not too bad. Let's not, like, kill him or anything. <laughs> then let's not even beat him up or anything, to be honest with you. I say we leave this guy alone. But, um, we just uh, we just take Farnies back. Love the kind of conclusion we came to here. The price of a ship's nothing in comparison to Farnies. I'm not sure what the hell's going on. Um, but yeah, the uh, the ship really has little to no value whatsoever in, in Farnese's place, in my opinion. And seemingly in the opinions of everyone else in the party as well, so that's really awesome to see. Especially considering her kind of useful unusefulness and what she thinks of herself. She's definitely getting there with the, uh, with the magic as well, as we saw. But um, also her mother actually seemed quite nice last episode. I wasn't expecting her to be very nice, but... She actually gave us some quite nice advice as uh, as Guts and Co were just kind of hiding in plain sight <laughs> in the background as Farnies rolled past. But yeah, looking forward to seeing how we're going to finish off these chapters today. Uh, it's been an interesting volume, hasn't it? What, not been one of my favourites or anything, but um, very different kind of tone than usual, as with this whole arc so far. But this one even kind of lighter than usual. Even like the conflicts and such, even though they're about marriage and Farnese kind of leaving and such, they're quite a lot more light than the usual kind of death and darkness and such. But yeah, do let me know what you guys think about these chapters down in the comment section. Leave a like on the video if you guys did like and subscribe to the channel if you do want to keep up to date with these reactions. Let's get into the ball. So I, I imagine this is going to be covering the pie. But as I've been saying, I really like the... The designs of this place it is super grand, isn't it? Super grand. I did say this, it did seem all very Italian, and these sculptures, especially ones I left here, do seem, uh, well, actually, maybe they might seem more Greek, I don't know. Again, I'm no expert in history at all. Oh, this one has got a little chopper. <laughs> I did uh, mention in the last chapters there was a, uh, there was a leaf in the place. Again, look at this. Awesome, isn't it? Absolutely awesome. Looks better than most actual kind of places like this. <laughs> but the kids on the top, which is a bit weird. Um, also a bit weird is these kind of scary-ish baby faces. I guess it makes sense because there's one like warrior head in between all these, but they do have a lot of babies. These royal and nobles. I wonder if we can spot Farnies. Probably not. Uh, 
Again, what a uh, what an image that is. Jorginho Van Dan <laughs> Van Dan. Uh, Jorginho Do Van Dimian. Joint manager of the Van Dimian Bank, father's right hand man. And in reality, the next head of the Van Dimian family. And you know what? He looks just like him, doesn't he? And that's probably another reason as to why. Poliziano do Van Dimion. Grand Governor General of the Holy See realm. And recognises the leading candidate for the next pontiff. This war will be no exception. There are many nations that would get nowhere were it, were it not for the Van Dimion backing. Pompus do Van Dimion. So, no, no wonder we couldn't spot that. Every last one of them is desperate to be in favour with the next tyrant. Oh, that's not even funny. <laughs> it's a bloody brother. You swine! Conspiring with Tudor, of all places? Have you no shame? That's like England, right? Tudors, the Tudors, Tudors, I don't know, who are they, ah, Lords of Midland, the public reason for this war is to recapture the Holy See territory from the Kushan invasion. But each nation's true motive is to carve Midland's domain into as many pieces as possible. Even if the Kushan are repelled, it's obvious that each nation's army will by no means shy away from remaining there. And now, with no kingdom, how will they regain their territories? To that end, what country, what power will they side with? That's, what that's where their thoughts lie. If they conduct themselves well... Sorry guys. If they conduct themselves well, they might at least procure a position, procure the position of regional governor general. Please desist from this, both of you. Stop it! Unhand me. Look at that, this guy is a scary motherfucker. <laughs> I would have you stop airing the shame of our kingdom in public. Sir Owen, we didn't we nobles each come to this place in search of assistance? Certainly, but from where, whom I mean to ask, assistance is not some random aristocrat or royalty. What did I just say? <laughs> but it, it kind of sounded like royalty, but I definitely didn't say royalty. But from who I mean to ask, or from whom I mean to ask, assistance is not some random aristocrat or royalty. This is guy's got this guy's got the same haircut as Farnies. It is all of you, you Midland lords, as a nobleman. I understand that you place all above all uh, as a nobleman, I understand that you place above all the relief of your territories and subjects. However, at this at a time like this, more than ever, as Midland as Midlanders we must bind together our strength in order to reclaim our kingdom. That is, if the royal family lives. Midland is an ancient kingdom. Therefore, as nobles, to us the royal bloodline is sacred, a peerless focus of our loyalty. To us, the royal family is the kingdom itself. Now, with no royal family, Midland is an unfulfilled dream. Well, funny you say that. It's actually a dream that is right now being fulfilled by Sir Griffith. <laughs> Griffith, <laughs> Griffith now holds on to this dream of yours for himself, actually. So he kind of holds the kings to the palace and uh, keys to the palace in a way, doesn't he, Griffith, by taking Charlotte? 
once it's revealed that she's alive, he'll actually gain the support from all these people, I imagine. Especially if he shows like they're married or something as well. Such a sad, such a sad thing. I'm, I'm reading worse than usual today. Apologies. Such a sad thing. The subjects of the dead king. So Laban, where are you now? Did you manage to safely infiltrate Wyndham? What of Princess Charlotte's safety? I don't remember what happened to him actually. I think I think he got away okay. I, I think we last saw him with the crocodiles under. The Fog City, right? But maybe not. I can do nothing for you. And it stings. Knights of a dead kingdom. What a miserable fall. That's a bit like being in limbo, isn't it? Knights of a dead kingdom. Speaking as one despaired by his own country, my hat's off to them. As And as one despaired by his own family, I say the same. Now I'm thinking about it, this guy reminds me a little bit of the guy from the... Um, I'm not sure what that arc's called. The arc with the um with the refugee camp. I'm not sure what that arc's called. Sorry if I'm being stupid. <laughs> but, um he kinda reminds me of that guy. This guy, but uh, not quite as nice. Even though he he does seem okay. Same type of guy, I guess. I think his name was like Jerome or something. He was like the knockoff guts, something something along those lines. Jamie. Something like that. But we're young, and we never spend our remaining years living in such idleness. Go on and scrabble. Drink stale wine together to your delight. In this birdcage you call the world. So it seems like they might be planning something. I'm not exactly sure what. He's got a bit of an ominous look on his face here. Maybe ominous is the wrong, wrong word, a bit of a uh, naughty face. <laughs> What's to come is not an age of the gentle, fully mapped inland seas, but of the raging open ocean. He who opens the unknown sea routes and sets foot upon unexplored lands. He who conquers those will be the conqueror of the age. Neither my father nor my subjects actually understand that point. 11th. On the northern frontier surrounded by ocean has, unlike other principalities, built up a history of shipbuilding, seafaring, and refusal to yield to the rough sea. Paying no mind to that superiority, their insult. What does that say? I hate it when words are kind of split up between two sentences like this. Makes them really hard to read. Their insular. insular. insularism. I don't even know what that means in the first place. Insularism. Insularism, the state of being isolated or detached. Okay. Their recent insularism makes them loathe the intervention of other nations, and they think of nothing but seclusion. My father, my father is the same. He displays interest in nothing beyond how to move and rearrange pieces on his limited chessboard. So I'm, I'm reading Umineko right now, so I'm, I'm hearing a lot about flipping the chessboard. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much flipping the chessboard, honestly. But it, it works. We alienated, we too, alienated by family and abandoned by nation. 
are full on follows, fellows in this cage word. World. Sorry, guys, like I said, my reading's been terrible today, hasn't it? Are forlorn fellows in this caged world? I think some of that comes from just the way these guys speak. Other times it's just me struggling to say world. <laughs> so yeah, apologies about that. If we're to wander forlorn, we'll just put to the sea. We will seize the coming aid. Brother, our bond, the goddess of victory. Era. So what is the actual plan from these guys? They're definitely scheming something. Definitely schemers. And you know what, funny enough, he's got like a similar hairstyle to his mum, hasn't he? Bit bigger curls, but quite similar. The goddess of victory, hair. Eh? How so? Again, looking very nice. And very cute. Roses. And how extravagant is this shit? Bloody hell. Amazing, isn't it? If, imagine if you showed people in this age what dresses would end up looking like. I mean, in most cases, they look nice today, but you, you, what I'm actually thinking of is that Lady Gaga meat dress <laughs> from those years back. If she's just wearing meat. I imagine showing them that, they're probably faint. No matter what father may say, we're in public. Once this uh, bethrow, bethrow, is that what you Bethrowal? Bethrothal. <laughs> Bethrothal? That sounds weird. I'm, I think I've heard the word Bethrothal. Something similar to that before, but Bethrothal. That's another one I'll have to Google in a sec. No matter what father may say, we're in public once this Bethrothal is officially announced. I'm guessing that's a word for like the arranged marriage. I think. The mum said last chapter that she got bethrowed. Yeah, bethrowed is like the marriage. Bethrothal, I imagine, is just the plural or, or whatever you call it for that. Uh, I'm not even going to bother Googling it because I think that's correct. <clears throat> he won't be able to cancel it on peril of his honour as family head. Once that's done, not only you and I, but Van Dimion and the eleventh will be yeah. Hold that thought, Magnifico. I like that side of you, but for now. Enough inelegant talk. I don't know why I'm almost getting kind of vibes that these guys are kind of maybe dating or something. <laughs> guys seem very thick in a in a kind of bond way, not not stupid, but they they seem to have quite a thick bond perhaps. And they're definitely being sneaky, but I'm not sure if they're actually being kind of I don't know. What was he about to say here? Question. I've looked forward to seeing you, my princess. I wonder if I may request the first dance of you. You may. My, my. Never ceases to amaze. What a superb gentleman. Go on, Serpico. Cut him up with that wind sword. Did he give his wind sword back? I'm not sure. He may have. I didn't notice because it was mostly the focus on Farnese's stuff given back. Won't you introduce me to Magnifico? Mother, when did you get here? 
I've just arrived today. That was your friend, Farnese's fiance. He's quite nice, though a bit mischievous looking. M Mother, where did you hear that? Oh, you know. It couldn't have been from father. Oh. Is it something he should not know? Oh dear, he's kind of given the game away a little bit here. Though she seems to have read him pretty well. Just from that small bit she saw from him. Nice but mischievous. Seems that way. But yeah, definitely uh, seems to be sweating a little bit. Mother! Your blood is undeniable. You gradually become more and more like your father in his youth. Hardly. Please stop teasing. Listen to some advice. Be careful of her when she's obeying what someone says, especially when she seems submissive. The more we do get to look at this guy, the more it does look a bit villainous. Not sure if that's just the pompous nature of how everyone looks at this party, though. A little bit more dressed up, a little bit more slimy looking. She's not the kind of woman who's at peace within the schemes of men. What are you trying to do? You'll be sorry if you don't listen. Just like your father. Okay. That's a little warning shot there from mother. Yeah, I do wonder what Mr. Serpico is thinking. He's probably figuring out all this in his head, isn't he? Your Farnese's servant. Um, I'm Serpico, madam. Yes, I remember now. It's been some time since you came to the estate. It has been over ten years. My life was saved by Lady Farnese at a young age. Due to that, I received the honour of being by her side. So, um, it was mentioned in the, the intro bits that he's actually her brother, which, again, that kind of took me a bit off guard. I don't, I don't know if we already knew that before it was revealed there. But I don't feel like I did. But maybe I just forgot. So is he speaking to his... He's definitely not speaking to his mother right now. <laughs> so his father was actually... Uh, Arnie's father, I guess. Um, yeah, it's funny because these are not related. But... It almost kind of feels like... It could be a good mother figure for him or something. I don't know. Not really sure what I'm trying to say, to be honest. More than a decade along Farnese's side? Really? Then you must be fairly warped as well. A little bit. <laughs> Such companions cannot be separated, because they cannot stand without entwining against each other, just like a pair of trees. Know that. You will continue to look after her then. How lovely. The scent of the forbidden. She is quite astute. Yeah, she sure is, isn't she? Ah, oh, here they are. <laughs> Again? <laughs> uh, it's cold. Looks like the snow stopped. I want to go inside. Hmm. Halt! Who goes? Here it is. Ah, of course. Let's hope that's not been peed in. I beg your pardon, but will you allow us to pass? People we, kn uh, we know are here. We've come for the pie. Good night shift. Here we go. There's no way these guys are getting let in, are there? Look at them. <laughs> and then look at everyone else at this party. No. These, these, these guys are like the nerds that tried to 
never actually seen this happen in my life and I've been to quite a few parties in my, in my teenage years but uh, these guys are like the nerds that don't get allowed into the party the outliers yeah let's, uh, let's read some comments quickly before we move on I like this shot of them though in the snow in the uh, in the cold it's amazing that Isidro is wearing this in the cold Amazing how they all deal with it because none of their clothes are really that warm or anything. Why are we talking about one piece of Team Mugiwara straw hats? Not sure what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as I said at the start, this guy, this guy says the same thing. It's nice actually not having to suffer so much. Especially for Guts. It's nice that we actually see, get to see him in bed resting with nice people. Very different volume this one, isn't it? Someone says it reminds them of the peaceful days of the band The Hawk, but to be honest, they were we didn't actually see too much peace in those days. We had little moments throughout, but more than ever now, we're kind of a bit peaceful, honestly. Not in as good a way, I don't think, just because of Casca's situation, but yeah, similar, I guess. Okay, not too much in the comment section today. Uh, so let's move straight on to the final chapter of this volume. The Colonnade Chamber. And I, ima I imagine it's Colonnade. Colonnade. <laughs> I doubt. Huh? Did something just go right in? Eh? A free pass. Okay, so Shirk has worked their magic. <laughs> Good job. Suggestion. The power of suggestion. Quiet. I'm using a spell to distract Odd, but if you make too much noise, we will be discovered. If this is a party, I bet they've got a bunch of good eats. It's no, it's no exaggeration to say I'm a gourmet elf. I'll offer my complimentary. <laughs> Food fighters, huh? Don't get carried away, you two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the drool. Like Shag and Scooby right here. I love this look on Shirka's face as well, by the way. <laughs> this proper bloody naggy. <laughs> In a good way. But yeah, let's not say stuff like a bunch of good eats. Because that language will stand out here, I imagine. It stands out to me. <laughs> a bunch of good eats. Oh dear. Good news is my uh, my doctor's actually got me a um a different spray now, so hopefully I won't be as bad allergy wise going forward. Whoa, that was sudden. So what's going on here? Oh shit. It's just fog. Oh shit. Oh shit. This is, yeah, this is terrible. Oh crap. Well, just as we were saying, <laughs> it was all quite nice and calm and not dangerous or anything. Ah uh, shit. Whoa, that was sudden. There was no doubt in my mind. This is the fog from when we were attacked at the beach cabin. You mean... Those are going to show up again? In the middle of the sea? Oh, yuck. It is coming. Something fierce and hostile. This fog rolled in quick. Well, shit. 
So what kind of creatures we got here then? That dog paws. Big paw. Oh, what is that? Oh god, what is that? Kind of reminds me like of the shot from um, an American Werewolf in London, the underground in the London Underground. Although you don't actually really get a good look at that wolf until the end, I believe. Anyway, it's been a while. It kind of reminds me of that shot looking down a long pathway. I really like that scene. I like a lot of things in that movie. It's actually quite an intimidating looking creature, isn't it? Not nearly as goofy as the crocs. <laughs> the walking crocs. Not a croc. What the hell is that? That like panther. That like panther wolf. That's too big for an alley cat. <laughs> Alloy cat. <laughs> Another reference here that I'm I'm not quite picking up. Or is he literally just like an alloy cat? <laughs> As with that time, I sense ominous odd. Strange. You'd think something like that would come attack us. Yeah, it just ran past. Maybe it's got a different objective. I was kind of, I was kind of assuming it was just hiding in the fog and it was gonna pounce. But maybe it realizes it can't be us. If it does then it's a smart creature. But if something like that's souped up in here, we'd better hurry. <laughs> Thanks to this fog though, it's easier for us to slip in. What's about to happen here? Look at that fog all on the... Well, I think that's snow, actually. I'm not sure. Is that fog or... Snow? Probably a mixture of both. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of both. What is about to happen here? I think as this would be the tough part. Can't you do something with magic? It will take a little time with that many people. I will see why. I... What's wrong? What? Huh? This way. There are lots of guards here. Thought transfer, sorry, yeah. Thought transference from Serpica. He says he's waiting at the rear entrance. Serpica. Okay, so it was him. I was kind of scared for a second there, like something to re replicate someone else's thought transference. That's a scary thought. It's a really scary thought. <laughs> Again, what beautiful design of this place. It's awesome, doesn't it? There he is. The colonnade chamber was at one point in history Kushan territory. 
But this land was won back from them. Is Serpico going to fight Guts here? Is that what's going to happen? I can't imagine that. Surely he realises there's some skeeving stuff going on and he's getting these guys to help Barney get out of here. I'd hope that's the case, but again, another another outcome I can see here is that, funny enough, as he said, he had no intention of fighting Guts. He might in, be intent on fighting Guts now that they've come to reclaim Farnese. So I guess we'll see. This colonnade chamber was at one point in history Kushan territory. When this land was won back from them, it seems one part of their palace was preserved as a victory monument. And here we are. I do love the Kushan styles, so yeah, I guess that makes sense why I like this place. I'm not exactly sure what a colonnade chamber is though. Is it like a wine chamber or something? The long sequence of columns joined by their often freestanding. Oh, okay. So it's just like the design of the place. I love that the first thing that comes up is berserk when you Google that. I apologize for calling you over here. The eyes are open. <laughs> Serpico, we have come to see far. <laughs> I was hoping it would be the first one, but it's it's the fight one. So we did give the wind sword back, I do believe. Again, didn't notice that. That is unfortunate, as I will not allow it to happen. Guts, this is presumptuous. But I will grant your wish, right here and now. Your wish to fight. And again, I love the threads here from Serpico. It looks really smooth, doesn't it? It looks a bit like a uh, an acorn. <laughs> and just with those little, I don't know. Uh, no, not an acorn. A um, what's it? What they called? I forget what they're called. No, I will not remember. Uh, those little um, kind of the acorn kind of shape, but they're quite a bit bigger. They're about like that big, um, and they have all those. They're what the hell are they called? Bloody hell! Oh, there's no way I remember. No way I remember. But they're like fully brown. Kind of sphere, sphere, kind of egg shaped, like, but they've got it's almost like a bit of a Christmas tree, but they're like fully brown again. I I'm probably sound quite silly right now. But, um, I can't really remember what they're called. Jesus, quite sad that I can't remember. It's quite nostalgic. Uh, I used to love playing with them as a kid and stuff, like, I used to love kicking them when they're on the floor. You see a lot of them on the, on the streets and such. Um, I wonder if I could be able to find it with just my limit. I'm going to type in brown thing <laughs> falling from trees. <laughs> what the? What the hell was that? Oh, it looks a bit like that. Oh, here it is. Here it is. These. Pine. Pines. Is it? Mm, no. But yeah, the, these things. I, can't, I don't know. I can't remember what they're called. They usually are, are quite a bit more kind of smaller than that and more egg looking. There, there they are. Kind of, I don't know what, but his, uh, his kind of suit looks a little bit like those to me, strangely. So why are we doing this? 
I mean, it seems obvious as, as to why, but sh again, shoot. Oh, I really like the shot of guts right here. Um, it it, re it seems obvious, but to protect her, kind of what she wants right now and what she's doing right now. But sh again, surely he realized that they're scheming something. Huh? You're gonna fight guts here? Serpica. Fine. <laughs> Not quite as, it can't be quite as nifty as last time, so okay, when we're on the, the cliff edge. And you're, you're missing your wind sword as well, which, uh, yeah, I feel like you're about to get smoked, to be honest. You probably should get smoked here. Destroyed. Again, I really like this shot of guts. I haven't had a shot of this, like, guts, it's almost this whole volume. Fine. <laughs> Guts, not you too. What's gone into you? Something we can't let go of, I guess. You guys stay here until this is settled. Although this is going to be slightly tough for Guts to fight him. He has picked a good place, hasn't he? Because it is, it's not as tight as, the, as an edge cliff, but it's still pretty tight. You can't. Guts, if he's going to be swinging his sword, he's going to be taking down these pillars and getting slowed by the pillars and such as well. And who knows how strong these are. But surely it's almost like a car park. Eventually he's going to knock enough pillars down that this whole place is just going to collapse, right? So yeah, this is a pretty smart choice from Serpico. He's always very smart with his fighting settings, isn't he? Picking the ideal situation to be in. As ideal as it can get, I still think it'll probably get smoked. But we'll see. No armor needed here, I hope. If the armor if the armor gets put on, then it's a hundred percent done. <laughs> That's nothing to worry about. One grave gonna be enough. <laughs> grave digger of fear. What are these? Two men fighting over a woman? I mean, Shaka, you got a, you got a, you're out of the loop here. <laughs> but go on, Shaka, fight for your man. <laughs> There's no way that they'll go at it seriously. They'll stop just short. No, I feel like they're both very serious. Although, as I said, I, I don't think Guts is going to use the armor. That'd be a bit too far. Super unneeded, super unnecessary. But we, as we know, it's not exactly his choice sometimes, so we'll see. I feel like he should be able to control himself here, though. He's got a look of nothing on his face. And there it is. It must be a bit cumbersome, a huge sword. This colonnade chamber is known as the Forest of Pillars. The space between them is narrowed, uh, is narrower than normal, and their number is vast. I mean, the thing is, I mean, I know Guts is going to fight here. It's inevitable we're going to end up fighting here and stuff, but why don't we just kind of leave? <laughs> why don't we just because there's no way Serpico would end up fighting Guts in front of any other nobles or anything right there's no way he'd kind of sully Arnice's name or anything like that so we could just leave this place and avoid fighting entirely I know Guts kind of wants to and I imagine he might relish the challenge of fighting in this place and it, it, it'll be a good kind of training as well in a way if we ever do get in a situation like this again we'll kind of have a good idea of what to do so inevitably we're going to continue the fight here, but genuinely we could just kind of walk out of this room right now and Serpico can't do anything. This, colon uh, this colonnade chamber is known as the Forest of Pillars. The space between them is narrower than normal, and their number is vast. A tactician, yes. <laughs> there is Yoda again. You sly fox. So you led us here? Pretty smart. Indeed, indeed. Something tells me I would not win against you head on. 
I do hope you understand. <laughs> Obviously. As always, you're one kind bastard. And it looks like that is where we're going to finish off today. Uh, probably quite the short reaction again. Yeah, reasonably. So we'll have a little peek at the, um, the opening pages of the next volume, I think. Just to make up for it being a little bit smaller. But yeah, it certainly is one cunning motherfucker. But yeah, another thing, yeah. Serpico can actually use these for uh, for cover as well. Not just that Guts is impaired, it actually does help Serpico. Not just by detrimenting Guts, but also using these as cover and hiding. He's got quite a long pokey sword as well, so you can just kind of go around him and, and just... He's pretty well set for this situation. But what is he going to do when all the pillars are gone? <laughs> what is he going to do then? Nice little, uh, nice little panel to end out here. Um, yeah, let's read some comments quickly before we uh, have a little look at a little sneak peek at the next volume. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at the opening images and then we'll have a little look at the uh, the chapter names as well. Doesn't look like too much in the comp section. Oh. <laughs> Rest in peace, Serpico. True. GG, you've doomed this chamber. He, he sure has. This place is going to be fucked. This place is going to be fucked. Where's my bloody scroller gone? Uh, person brings up an interesting point. He says he looks like Guts is like pained and straining every time he swings his sword, and someone says that's because he um he's actively trying to just suppress the armor, which is interesting, isn't it? Might just be the fact that he's he's just like major. He's been in bed for a while. He's majorly kind of injured and such by the armor right now. It is maybe it's just a massive strain to use it as well. But, um, that's quite interesting actually. Uh, yeah, not too much in the comment section. So um, yeah, let's have a little sneak peek at the uh, the next volume, volume thirty. Bloody hell! How many chapters have we got left? So this is chapter first chapter. Of this one's two five seven. Just over a hundred now. Damn. Not not too many volumes left then. I think if there's there are usually eight or ten a chap a volume. I guess we can have a little look quickly. Oh, they added a new uh, a new person there. So yeah, there's uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten per volume. So they've literally got just over ten volumes now, right? It's pretty crazy. Although I say that, um, I think someone did tell me that they do release chapters instead of volumes. I think there's like one chapter, like a month or something. So uh, maybe less volumes than what I just said. I'm not even really sure what I'm looking at here. Some kind of giant beast. Image of Serpico there. Really nice, isn't it? Half moon. Or a crescent moon. Oh shit, these guys again. Is that what it is? It's like a lion. These corny bastards. Horny, horny bastards. 
Like, what, are they, what are they called again? I forget. I keep wanting to say the Baki Raka, but I know it's not the Baki Raka. It's like the Daki or something, something like that. It was like four letters. Raised. Funnily enough, I actually think a normal line probably looks a little scarier than that. Just how kind of unassuming they look sometimes. Yeah, they can just rip your throat out. But yeah, that's um, uh, there it is again. Let's read this new uh, this new little character bit. I think they're all the same. We've got a new one here, Roderick. It's quite a short one. A naval ship captain and third in line to the royal throne of the 11th. Oh, it's the Lith. I, I've kept saying the 11th. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Of the, of the Lith. So apologies about that. Uh, a, a naval ship captain and third in line to the royal throne of the Lith. A uh, Mar maritime power within the domain of the Holy See. He is a friend of Farnese's brother, has become Farnese's fiance. Well, the only thing I gained from that was that it's Lith and not Eleventh. So, um, yeah, we've still got the Valconia chapters, so we've got Duel. Obviously, picking up where we left off, it looks like. Suzerain. Suzerain of the religious domain. Bars. <laughs> Bars right there. Suzerain. Enchanted tiger. Intrusion. The rusted bird cage. A proclamation of war. Demon beast invasion. Divine revelation. And city of the demon beasts part one and two. So it sounds like we've got a lot of interesting stuff to look forward to next time. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys did think about these chapters down in the comment section. Uh, again, looks like it gets quite crazy in the next volume. Uh, leave a like on the video, uh, video if you guys did like and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with these reactions. I'll be back next time with uh, these first opening chapters. So see you guys then. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.